Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is simple move to the actor and location nodes. Let's run this quick little example, and I'll cover what we're going to cover. So when I hit play, you're going to see our little red pawn comes over to our little gray pawn, which is my player here. If I was to actually replay this, and I'm going to move my character this time, you're going to see the red pawn follows my character until he gets to it. And once he gets to it, he's going to go ahead and he's going to stop. So let's see how we did this and what these two nodes are for. So to start off with, we have our simple move to location node, and we have our simple move to actor node. And they're pretty simple. They each have an execute wire to come in. They have two inputs, and then they have the execute wire out. And that's it. These are very simple nodes. You're not actually even going to find if you type them in under simple move to. You'll find them in the navigation section, not in the AI section. However, I would consider these basic AI as they are using the navigation mesh, and you are required to have an AI controller hooked up to your pawn in order to actually have them work. So let's see how they work. We'll start with the simple move to actor because that one's pretty simple, as the name says, and it basically has two inputs. We have a controller and a goal. The controller is the controller that you have created that you have attached to your pawn that will allow it to move. Now in our example here, I have created a generic AI controller that as you can see, it has no functionality. It's empty inside. It does nothing. But because it is an AI control, it, sorry, it inherits from AI controller, it does have two extra components added on automatically. So to create one, it's pretty simple. We would just blueprint class. You can go down here under all classes and expand it. You can type AI. And you're going to find under controller, you'll find the AI controller. So our AI controller, after you've done that and created it, that's all you need to do. Because we're not actually doing anything but a simple move, your generic AI controller doesn't need any extra functionality. So again, the best, the main reason why you need an AI controller is it adds these two extra components, path following component and the actions component. And this allows the AI controller to take input from an external node, like the move to, and then find on the navigation where it should move to, and then move to. Simple as that. So, what I have here is my generic AI character. That's what we've been looking at so far. I have all of these controls down here, which I've copied over from my generic character, but I'm going to go ahead and delete them all. These are not needed, assuming I can actually get rid of everything. These are simply leftovers from the original character that I brought in. And when you're using an AI controller, you're not going to have manual control over it, so therefore there's no reason to keep that in there. Now if you were going to have something, for example, where it's a AI controller when you're not physically possessing it and then you want to allow your player to possess it, then you would have two different controllers and you would swap in and out between the AI and the player's controller. So. Right here we have get controller. The node is basically going to get the controller that's attached to this pawn. And if we look in our class defaults and we scroll down, we're going to find our controller class for the AI is AI controller or generic AI controller. Either one of these will work. AI controller is the default that comes built into the engine. Generic AI controller was the one I created. Now if we go and run this, you'll notice our pawn works. Now to show an example of what I meant by it needs to be an AI controller, if I switch this over to a generic player controller or player controller and hit play, you'll notice the pawn doesn't move. The pawn is trying to move, but because the controller attached to it is not an AI controller and doesn't have these components, it's not going to work properly. So make sure you have an AI controller parent for the controller that you have hooked up to your pawn that you intend to be controlled by the navigation system or the AI nodes. So there's our controller setup. The next one is where are we going to? Now the simple move to actor takes a actor as the reference for the goal. So I'm doing this pretty simply. I'm getting the player's controller. 
getting the controlled pawn that the player is controlling and feeding it in is my simple move to. So as you can see, when we run it, he's moving to that one. And that's why when we run it and we move our character, you'll notice he's trying to chase it down. And once he gets to it, he finishes. Now, here's one thing that the simple controllers, the simple move tos, do that you may have an issue with and why this is the basic form of AI. Let me go ahead and hook up my print string here. And you're gonna notice immediately when I hit play, before the actor, before my pawn, my AI, gets to my character, it's actually gonna print out the string. See how on the top left it says moved? This is an execute without a delay. It's going to execute the move to, and then it's going to print the string immediately. It's not going to wait till it gets to the destination before it actually continues executing. So that's something to keep in mind. The simple move to's are literal go here and then it continues on with execution. Now, looking at the simple move to location, it's going to be the same thing. We're going to want our AI controller for the controller. And then you simply take in a vector three or a location for the location. And in this case, I'm doing the same thing I did before getting the player controller, getting the controlled pawn, and then I'm getting the pawn's location and setting it. Now the difference we're gonna see here is once I move, our pawn is still gonna go to where it wanted to go to. And if I was to play it again, and then if you watch where the pawn's at and then I move, the pawn's gonna continue going until it gets to the actual location. So it wants to go to where my player's middle point is, the origin, because that's the location I told it was, and if something gets in the way, for example, another pawn's there, it's going to continue trying until it can finish the simple move to. There's no failure. And to show that's the same thing, when we hit play, you'll notice it says moved immediately, even though it hasn't reached its destination. Now, in terms of using this for a basic AI, you can technically cheat. Let's go ahead and unhook our print strings, and we'll do the move to actor event. We're going to hook this back up here, and we'll hook it up into a timer. What we're going to do here is basically we're going to tell it to move to the actor and then every four seconds we're going to call this event again. So what we're going to see is it moves to the actor and then it's going to move to the actor again and then move to the actor again and it's going to repeat every four seconds. This is pretty much your most basic simple AI. Now you'll also notice the orientation of our AI is rotating appropriately for the move. We're not just simply moving along whatever rotation it's currently at. It's rotating to face our target, and it's moving to our target appropriately. So that's one benefit of our simple move tos. Now, in terms of actually using this, it's useful if you want to move something maybe along a patrol point, and maybe somewhere in maybe in the actual AI itself and your pawn, you have some form of sense every frame or every half a second. Maybe it's doing a line cast or can it see the actor every half a second in addition to this. But one thing you're going to have an issue with, as you notice, because you're firing the simple move to and there's no escape on it and there's no abort, you might have a slight bit of an issue when you're trying to do something more complicated. And that's where our behavior trees, our blackboards, and our other more advanced AI come in. And those are covered in other videos. But for now, this is just a simple node for simply moving an act something, an AI pawn, to an actor or a location, simply. Now, a, a, useful, a useful use for this is maybe you want to simply move a bullet to a target, for example. You have a shooter and you're firing a bullet. You can use these. As long as you're not doing it too much because this is going to use processing power, it's a really cheap not cheap, really easy way of just simply having something go from one spot to another appropriately. Just think of it that way. Maybe you have a homing bullet or a homing missile and you simply want it to get to the end target and there you go. Maybe put a little collision check in here where if it collides with something else it explodes. And there you go, you have a homing rocket. So that's it. Those are our simple move to location and move to actor nodes. One thing I did not cover is because these are using navigation, I just realized it now, I forgot to mention it, you need to make sure you have a navigation mesh set down. You have a navigation bounce. And that's our little green thing right here, as you can see when I toggle it on and off. I've covered the navigation mesh. It is in another video. 
But just to show you, if I delete it, um, that would be that one. And then the recast version of it. And I go ahead and hit play. You'll notice nothing's happening. It's not going to work because we don't have a nav mesh. So you need to make sure that you do have a valid nav mesh set up inside of your scene. Or else your AI will not be able to properly navigate to its target. So that's it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.